What is up, everybody? Let's go ahead and get started right away. Um, to shorten my video making process today, I'm just doing the applications portion of 1-6 day two. Um, if you want more specific information about the elimination method, I will post my elimination video from Algebra 1. Um, and you can scan through that. It's got all the same information, except I think I actually go through it in a little more detail. So you'll get, I think, a better better explanation than if I were to try and rush through what's in your packet. So um, if you're doing notes, uh, if you need notes to turn in, then just uh, copy down the notes from the first video. And then we're going to jump in and do some applications here. So. Um, when you're solving system of equation application questions, there's typically a series of steps that you go through in each problem. So we're going to look through this one, we're going to read it really quick, and then we're going to run through those steps and we'll see that those steps carry over. Um, and you get kind of used to seeing the same types of um, questions. but. You're choosing between two long distance telephone plans. Plan A has a monthly fee of $20 with a charge of five cents per minute, and plan B has a monthly fee of $5 with a charge of 10 cents per minute. For how many minutes will the cost of the two plans be the same? Okay, so the, two th the first two things that we need to, or the, the first step, really in, in solving one of these word problems is to first define, the first thing you have to do is define our two unknowns. Okay, our unknowns are the things in the problem. And when I say variables, people think X and Y, but we have these two things that kind of we, we don't know, we're gonna define them based on those. <laughs> And then, um, and then we'll be able to construct our equations with our two unknowns. So we're going to define the two unknowns. We really have one that's really important. And that's kind of what the question is asking us. So the question is asking us, for how many minutes will the cost of the two plans be the same? And it really gives us a hint um, of what, what our two variables are there. For how many minutes will the cost of the two plans be the same. So our two unknowns, I'm going to call M. And let's be very specific. Don't just say M is minutes. M is, we're comparing plans, is the number of minutes that, uh, number, of min, number of minutes talked this month. Okay, and then C is gonna be the cost, or rather the monthly bill, the cost of um, phone service. This month. Okay, so those are our two unknowns and they're both present in both plans, right? You can determine the cost of plan A after you talk for so many minutes, and you can determine the cost of plan B after you talk for so many minutes. So we've defined our two unknowns. Step two. Step two is to write, or rather um, create, or write, uh, let's just say create, sure. Create two equations using variables from step step one. Okay, so we're gonna create two equations using the variables from step one. Now, the equations that we create typically correspond to two pieces of information that were given from the problem. I think if you read this a couple more times, um, you know, read the problem, make sure you fully understand what's going on. You'll be able to figure out what those two situations are. We have two situations that involve a cost and the number of minutes talks per month, right? Those two situations correspond to our two equations and they are plan A, plan B. Okay, so let's take a look at these. Plan A, create our system, plan A, 
the cost per month um, is different because our cost is equal to, for plan A, we have a $20 fixed rate. The amount we pay per month is 20 bucks, plus every additional minute is 0 0.05 or five cents. So it's five cents per minute, but we have this $20 flat rate. In contrast, plan B is five dollars plus 10 cents per minute. Now, if we take a look at these two things, um, you can kind of reason out. Plan A is for those that, um, that are going to talk a little bit more, right? If they're talking for quite a long time on their phone, plan A is the one you want because it's cheaper per minute. And over time, um, it's gonna be the cheapest plan if you're talking a bunch. If you hardly use your phone at all, then you could pay as low as $5 a month for plan B. But if you turn into a long-term talker, they're gonna make some money off of you. So that's step two. All right, so I guess there's really only two steps. It's like the shortest list ever. Um, and then from here, we now have what we're looking for and we're able to solve. So let's talk about our strategy for solving this. You can, you know, if you're gonna solve for this on paper, you can use either substitution or elimination. In fact, I will do both, and you should do the one that makes the most sense to you. So I'll do it kind of, or at least the starting portion twice. When it says for how many minutes will the cost of the two plans be the same, it's really kind of, asking us to set these two things. The costs are the same. So the cost of plan A is equal to the cost of plan B. So we're really just setting these two equal to each other, which would be substitution. Okay, if we're using the substitution method, it's gonna look like 1t, since c equals this and c equals that, these things are equal to each other. Okay, which is, what's it gonna look like that? Let me make sure I got enough room here. Sweet. Okay, let's go ahead and subtract 5 from both sides to get 15 plus 0 0.05 m equals 0 0.10 m. Okay. And then I'm gonna subtract 0 0.05 from both sides and we'll end up with 15 is equal to 0 0.05, 0 0.05 M. I subtracted this from both sides and we'll get M is equal to three. So what does this mean? Does this answer our problem? Actually, we have answered our problem. At this point, we've, we've said kind of everything that we need to say. Um, using substitution. If we were to plug 300 back in, what that would give us is that would give us the cost of, um, it'll give us the cost of the plan. So you'll notice that if I plug in here, what is um, 0 0.1 times uh, 0 0.1 times 300 is 30, and 30 plus five is 35. If you plug in 300 here, you end up with um, 15, 15 plus 20 is still 35. So when you, if, if a person in plan A talks for 300 minutes, they'll have pay the same amount as someone from plan B that's talked for. So basically it's gonna cost them 35. So we get this point that is, you know, 300 comma, 35 if you want to write it like that. It's not X and Y, so to speak, but um, we can solve for the variables individually. So if we plug in 300, we'll get C equals 35, but we've answered our question right here. M equals 300 minutes. That is our solution. The C at that value is $35. So if we talk, if we talk 300 minutes, the bill will be $30. Now, what if we were to use elimination? I'm gonna change my color here. If you just use substitution, you're done right here. You've done, you've done your job. But let's say you wanna do it with elimination. 
You certainly can. All we have to do is C equals 20 plus 0 0.05 M and C equals 5 plus 0 0.10 M. Now you could, it doesn't really matter what you do, but C, we're going to subtract the bottom from the top and you end up with 0 equals 15 plus, whoops, right, C minus C is 0, 20 minus 5 is 15, 0 0.05 minus 0 0.10 is a negative. 0.05m. Okay, uh, and then solving there we'll get 0.05m equals 15 if we add that to both sides. m equals 300 again we get um, we get the same result that we had before. So it doesn't matter which method you use, choose the one that makes the most sense to you. Hey, this problem says a hotel has 200 rooms. I'm not gonna write out all the steps again, I'm just gonna go kind of um, and I'm not going to do substitution and elimination both. I'll just do the one that is the, makes the most sense. Those with kitchen facilities at the hotel rent for $100 per night, and those without kitchen facilities rent for $80 per night. On a night when the hotel was completely occupied, revenues were $17,000. How many of each type of room did the hotel have? So, like I said, step one writing those equations and making them meaningful, defining our unknowns, it usually has to do with the question that they're asking. How many of each type of room does the hotel have? Well, there are two variables, right? These, these problems always have two unknowns, and those are our two variables. The, two, the number of rooms, so the variables, is the number of rooms of each kind um, that were that were so, well, the, yeah, that the hotel has. Basically, um, K is the number of rooms with kitchens, and N is the number of rooms without kitchens. Okay, so we have defined our variables. Now we know that since all of the rooms were booked, that that the amount made that might, night was based off the you know the number of rooms that are present. So those are our two variables. They should be fairly well defined. Um, they're you know we could maybe add more a little more detail, but not much. Okay, let's move on to. Whoops, I think that was supposed to be green. Move on to step two, which is to write our two equations. So the two equations that involve the number of rooms with kitchens and without kitchens are measuring two different things. One of them has to do, the two clues that are given to us is a hotel has 200 rooms in conjunction with the fact that they're all occupied. So with that information, we can say, they're all occupied, it has 200 rooms, therefore K plus N has to be 200. We know that the total number of rooms with kitchens, total of rooms without kitchens, is 200. There's equation one. Okay. The next bit has to do with the amount of revenue that was brought in on that night. Okay. And the, to get this equation, the best way that I can explain it is as follows, right? If the hotel has Let's say the hotel only on a less busy night sold one room with a kitchen, one room without a kitchen. That would be $180. If I said they had two rooms with kitchens and two rooms without kitchens, that would be um, $360. And so you can take the number and then multiply the price to see how much revenue is brought in. So if they had like five rooms with kitchens and without you multiply 5 times 100 and 3 times 80 and then add the total together so we have a little bit of information we know that we know that $17,000 in revenue was brought in for those 200 rooms so then what we can say is we can say well let's do $100 times the number of rooms with kitchens because each for each one of these is going to contribute $100 and each one of the rooms without a kitchen is going to contribute $80. And so what we can do here, 
is we can now have our system of equations that is solvable. Um, let's see, what's the easiest? I think elimination is pretty easy here. Let's go ahead and do elimination. That's not too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to step three, which is solving. And to use elimination, I'm actually just going to multiply the top one by 100, which would be 100k plus 100n equals 20,000 all over 100k plus 80n equals 17,000. I'm going to subtract the bottom equation from the top equation, and you'll get 20n is equal to, what is that, 3,000? Okay, and then our solution is going to be 3,000 divided by 20, which is, cancel, cancel, 100. So I have just found that n equals 150. What that means is that there are 150 rooms in the hotel that don't have kitchens. And we can deduce that if the total number is 200, that means that the number of rooms with kitchens, you know, plugging this back in or just doing the math quickly in your head, is 50. And then we've done what the problem has asked us to do. And now for the fun one. When a small plane flies with the wind, it can travel 800 miles in five hours. When the plane flies in the opposite direction against the wind, it takes eight hours to fly the same distance. Find the average velocity of the plane in still air, the average velocity of the wind. Okay, this is kind of strange. Um, this is a weird question to ask, but it's really not too bad if you know a couple basic things. In order to do this problem, you have to remember this old formula. There's this classic D equals RT or distance equals rate times time. And we need that to be able to do this problem. You have to know that distance equals rate times time. And so Here's how I usually explain problems that are like this. First, we need to define our unknowns. It's already given to us. Basically, find the, I'm going to call it phi sub um, v sub s. We're going to call this the velocity of the plane in still air. So if there was no wind at all, how fast the plane would be going on average. And the last one is the velocity V sub W, which is the velocity of the wind. Now there's a couple of things that you have to understand, and there are a couple assumptions that are made in this problem. It's the first assumption is that the wind doesn't change. It's the same wind when they fly to versus when they fly from. So it's like if you're flying into the wind, it's going to slow you down. If you're flying with the wind, it should speed you up and it should be a little bit faster of a flight. So we're assuming the wind is unchanging over the period of time in which these people are flying. So we want to know how fast the plane can fly if there was no wind. That would be V sub S. And V sub W is the velocity of the wind that was aiding us in one direction and preventing us in the other direction. Okay, cool. So to get our two equations, two equations are gonna look like this. Two is, so we've got our two unknowns, V sub S, V sub W, and our two equations are gonna be based on the trip, the two trips. So when it's flying with the wind, when it's flying with the wind, we use distance equals rate times time. Now, um, I'm going to actually erase this. We're going to use D equals RT. Um, it's the same distance on both trips. So it's 800 miles. Okay, it's 800 miles is our distance with the wind. The wind doesn't change the distance we have to fly. It does change the rate, though. Okay, and then time is five hours. So the, the rate 
that we're flying in this case is actually neither v sub s nor v sub w it is their sum when we're flying with the fin with the wind the rate at which we fly is actually v sub s plus v sub w and then we multiply that by the time uh, which is five hours We've got to make sure our units light up that's hours miles I think this should be miles per hour, but we can get that here in just a second. Okay, and then the next one, it's uh, this is against the wind. This is against the wind. We're still flying 800 miles, but the speed that we're flying or the rate that we're flying is is not this, right? It is v sub s. So we're flying against the wind, which means the wind's velocity is slowing us down, minus v sub w times, how long did it take us to fly? Eight hours. There we go. So we're, it takes us a little bit longer to fly the same distance of 800 miles. So now we have our system of equations here. We should be able to solve it be able to solve it. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, I think elimination makes the most sense here. Let's distribute those and rewrite our system. So it's going to be 800 is equal 5 VS plus 5 VW. And 800 is equal to you know what, I think this is kind of overkill. Whatever, we can still go. Yeah, this is, this is not the right way to do this. There's a much simpler way. You could multiply those out. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, in this one, I'm gonna divide both sides by five. If you divide both sides by five, we get a thing. Hold on, let me double check my math here. That's gonna be 100. Dividing by five will be something. One can't math. Is that gonna be eight hundred divided by five? One minus B goes into six. Um thirty six times hundred sixty. Okay. Okay, cool. One sixty. All right, so divide both sides by five and we'll get 160 equals V sub S plus V sub W. Then divide both sides by eight and you'll get 100 equals V sub S minus V sub W. And this is actually ready for an elimination if we add the two equations right away. So if we add them together, just like that, we end up with 260 equals, these cancel two times V sub s, those go away, negative plus positive. Divide both sides by two, V sub s, or the velocity of the plane in still air is 130 miles per hour. So we've solved for that. So the velocity of the plane, miles per hour. The velocity of the plane, if there was no wind, would be 130 miles per hour. And when there is a wind, well, we can just look at this equation here, the velocity of our plane plus the velocity of wind is 160, which means that the velocity of the wind has to be 30 miles per hour. Or you could substitute in 130 into here or into here, but you're just going to do a bunch of math and you're going to end up getting 30. So, anyways, that's it. That's it for our applications video. Thanks for watching. Um, systems of equations are cool. They're fun when you're able to do them by hand. It's kind of like untangling a little puzzle or something. So anyways, we'll see you next time.